Hello and welcome to this part of the chapter. So in this chapter, we will study about defense in depth principles. So what is defense in depth? Defense in depth is a strategy that leverages multiple security measures to protect an organization's assets. In simple words, we need to implement many technical controls to safeguard our system. The thinking is that if one line of defense is compromised, Additional layers exist as a backup to ensure that threats are stopped along the way. So we need to put multiple technical controls in a sequential manner or in a holistic manner so that if any of those boundaries are surpassed, bypassed or trespassed, the next upcoming boundary should defend it. So defense in depth addresses the security vulnerabilities inherent not only with hardware and software but also with the people. So let us suppose if one person, he has got some uh, identity card of the employee, uh, he accesses somehow the main door, but there should be a biometric also that will prevent him to go inside that building as well. So defense in depth addresses the security vulnerabilities inherent not only with the hardware and software, but also with the people as negligence or human error are often the cause of security breach. So basic, what are the components like we can consider? We can put physical controls like examples include key cards to enter the building or scanners to read fingerprint, as I said. Other could be for the network security controls. So there are software which authenticates employee to enter the network and uses the device or application. Another could be administrative control, which authorizes employees or any other uh, individual once authenticated to access a certain part of applications or the parts of the network. So administrative controls we can implement. We can implement antivirus. This is the tool that stops malicious software from entering the network and spreading. Next is the behavioral analysis. Like now the days latest algorithms are available or machine learnings are available, which can detect the anomalies uh, in the behavior of employees or in applications or in device itself. So uh, by layering and even duplicating security process, the likelihood of breach is minimized and that is the purpose as well. So let's see some of the examples here. So we can see there is a one network here. Here we can see the controller RTUs, field combos are at a uh, different location. Then it is communicating with the uh, SCADA, with the control system, field device communication. And we can see here modems are there, data DAS systems are the application server, historians are there, database server, HMI computers, engineering workstations. So this is a control system LAN here we can see. Then we have some routers which is extending this communication to external business. Now we have some backup control system. So there is one dedicated path to backup control system. We have remote business peers. So it could be the power grid companies, the other, uh, any, any other utilities who, who are the stakeholders of this business. So they are also communicating. Uh, there is a VPN access to uh, some third party center also. We have historian once again, then we have corporate LAN uh, sitting here. So corporate LAN has like IT authentication server, FTP server, web server, email server, DNS, web application server, business workstations for uh, daily business uses. Then corporate PBX systems are there for the communications. And yes, we can see here one firewall, which is uh, this corporate network is connected to the internet, but we do not know whether the backup center is also connected to internet, whether remote uh, business is also connected to internet. So uh, we can see this is a bit of flat network. We can see there is a rarely any segmentation or anything is there. So we can say whether antivirus is installed or not on these systems. So whether proper security measures are installed on this architecture or not. So we can say this is a uh, quite open network, flat network and very easy to intrude by anyone and due to the lack of the zoning, lack of the implementation of the technical controls. So we need to, you know, we need to move from this system to this system like this in this uh, right side, we need to, we can see that we have implemented many firewalls out here. So you see there is one wireless DMZ made for this wireless access point so that all the communications which is going to the wireless, uh, it should go through a firewall then we have authentication dmg so if it is a authentication server that is also uh, that traffic is also monitored by this firewall then we have ftp dmg so if there is any communication happening between authentication server and ftp that is also monitored we have web server dmg dmg as, as already we discussed in purdue level that it is a demilitarized zone which which monitors all the traffic whatever is passing through it and then we have email dmg which will 
check all those communications in and out of the organizations through email then dns dmz so for everything for the all the applications we have created a separate dmz's and these are feeding these are these traffics are monitored we have a corporate LAN, uh, then on corporate LAN we are putting only the business related or corporate related workstations and web application servers. Though this communication is also filtered, uh, we can see uh, this firewall. So what we did from this firewall, we just created multiple, uh, initially everything was on the corporate LAN. So anyone can access from wireless to see all these things. But now we have created separate uh, VLANs or DMZs. So now each of this communication is being filtered and we are generating logs, we are monitoring what is happening, who is accessing, what is uh, getting accessed. All these types of communications are now monitored here. Next to this, uh, if we see this, this level in this level, we can see that initially there was nothing, one router was there and three, uh, these three servers were sitting around. So our aim was to check what is happening here. So what we did, we put one, firewall here and uh, through this vpn communication is now terminating on the firewall uh, earlier it was terminating on the router and then now this firewall created multiple dmz is here also so authentication dmg security dmg we put one security server here we put uh, we put here uh, one web server then we put uh, business communication server we authentication server so so this authentication server now authenticate all the users then then only they will have access to iccp DC, db and external business communication server that is the purpose of the authentication server so what is authentication server if you want to know like you need to read about the uh, ca root server if you want to see that that provides the authentication or for the network devices there is one radius server that provides the authentication of the radius uh, network devices so uh, second firewall was implemented here then uh, we can see two small firewalls are also here so this was initial path like uh, all this control system LAN was going to this backup LAN directly so what we did we do not know the state of the other side so this is the untrusted network uh, what is untrusted network whatever is not in our control that is untrusted network network whatever is in, in our control that is a trusted network so from this trusted control LAN, if something is going out and inside so we put a dedicated firewall here then also from external business server it is going to some third party maybe remote business peers also so we put a firewall here so, so now all these communications whatever we see we t this is inside the plant premises and whatever communication is going outside we put a particular firewall firewall in all these places so and this is our internal network so no need to put here any controls because these all are in our internal premises and if we put firewall yes we can obviously we can put firewalls we can put industrial firewalls but we need to see whether it is impacting our performance of the industrial assets industrial uh, communications or not so we need to weigh our terms in terms of the security in terms of the performance then only we can uh, put some technical controls in the place so there are also blue dots we can see everywhere so what we did we implemented intrusion detection system also so one thing what we did we put in firewalls there another thing we can we created all these dmgs so might be we put all the all the antivirus on all these servers we installed application allow listing in all these servers then now it's a term to put intrusion detection systems also so intrusion detection systems are the systems which can detect any type of intrusion happening on your network based on the traffic changes based on the behavior changes is so IDS is already a different topic so we need to study about IDS as well so IDS uh, detects any type of uh, deviation from the baseline behavior so IDS what it does it does uh, IDS are two types so one is network intrusion uh, detection system another is host based intrusion detection system so network uh, based detection systems what it does it analyzes the PCAPs which are the uh, network traffic and then from that it tries to give you vulnerability it will try to give you asset inventory it will give try to give you the rogue uh, systems whatever is added so those types of information it will give you if there is a new system attached it will give you information of that you can get a complete network map from the ideas also so ideas are being offered by like dragos nozomi dark trace tenable ot so there are multiple solutions out there which are providing so now we can see this is much more secured with uh, just two or three technologies we implemented and we are moving towards the defense in depth principle. Now let's see some more examples. So here we have uh, one example. So here what we can see that we have categorized the confidentiality, integrity and availability 
uh, of each level what we have created so if uh, it is a physical level like zero their uh, confidentiality and integrity doesn't matter because uh, all are the voltage communications so availability is the highest required then uh, this is a protection level and here we have port servers meter serial radio relay and and here we have a uh, availability is highest always required so low integrity will also work here in automation this is the third where relay switches common proxies are there yeah, at this level we see that we need integrity highest uh, if something gets changed at this level that, that will disturb the process availability is a medium required because due to the redundant systems available uh, in this level so level uh, the proposed uh, we can see this is the proposed defense in depth model of ICS network which has uh, multiple levels and uh, the levels delineated by their functional tasks and focus on their goals so level 3 and below are machine based and communications are largely machine to machine with a focus on ensuring continued operation of the ICS so below this level what we can see they all these are like M2M we have written M2M communications are happening below and level 4 and above are the level 4 and above the human to machine with a focus on providing high level services like data aggregation data logging uh, at lower levels of the ICS availability and integrity remain the goals while in human interface reasons confidentiality and integrity are becoming more important so different aspects of the security are considered at each of these layers in in human to machine communication reason means like level 4 and above confidentiality and integrity are of higher importance in the machine to machine communication reason level 3 and below the need for the availability increases while the integrity requirements remain same so in the enterprise world if email or web traffic is delayed by 200 millisecond or 400 millisecond that doesn't matter that won't be an issue but however in a ICS or a goose uh, network uh, relay to relay communication if uh, should be processed in 4 milliseconds only if it get delayed then it will uh, derail the process uh, uh, parameters as well Similarly, it is possible and suggested to allow list communication in machine to machine reason of the IS, but a deny list approach in, uh, is required in human to machine because uh, we need to uh, keep uh, the communications in these reasons in the allow mode and in this reason we can fit in deny mode as well, deny all. So major thing is that the strength of defense in depth model all that allows a specific security focus at each level. So for each level we need to design, uh, provide the security level so like for physical level we can say analog data collection and direction devices such as relay sensors meters controls control unit valves are there so we can focus on the availability is the focus of this level because the raw data are transferred here uh, any processing is taken place for uh, level one what we can uh, uh, again we can say that availability is paramount at this level both for intelligent electronic uh, devices and their processing capabilities that of the communications because of their real time nature so these all uh, networks are called time sensitive network now moving ahead is the level 2 so level 2 our focus uh, will be on the integrity should take precedence at this level so integrity is important to ensure that the system state and events are correctly reported to operators so that's why integrity is important in uh, level 2 in level 3 we can say that the uh, integrity and confidentiality increase in importance so level 3 and above interact with the external networks and cannot always be thought of truly private so this is especially true when higher levels start including general purpose computers so which are easier to compromise so if a computer has windows or linux that is easier to compromise but a proprietary computer that needs a, a specific skill to compromise it so which is easier to compromise and use as fibers to access control system devices that is about level 3 now going to level 4 uh, focus will be on both confidentiality and integrity are the critical importance at level 4 because of the prevalence of the general purpose computers like similar which availability takes a backseat so we need to uh, uh, it's, a, it's almost similar now moving to level 5 our focus will be integrity and availability of the parameter or paramount so if for perimeter security also the good physical perimeter include multiple layers like we need to uh, put a barrier or fence then we need to put access control locks then monitoring with the cameras so from an electronic perspective confidentiality and integrity of the communications leaving or entering are also important vpns also we can implement if if there are uh, communications happening from outside 
so we need to monitor people as well as process all traffic from for this network and similar what what technology we can implement in the, each of this level we can see from this diagram also so similar type of methodology we have taken and we have implemented multiple technologies here so if we see here uh, we have ethernet firewall we have ethernet switch we have uh, serial communications machine communication human communications all are represented in different forms we input syslog server we put authentication servers here so this type of technology as well as segmentation level wise approach we need to follow in defense in depth principles so uh, that that makes a good understanding of defense in depth principle why it is required and how it is uh, how it can be done so we need to uh, put a proper uh, approach by putting a layered approach layered security so let, let's read about understand about this in our upcoming chapters also so uh, this defense in depth principle is now uh, complete i uh, hope you understood let's meet in next chapter thank you